excuse the hair, excuse the dirty face, the dusty shoes, excuse the fact I haven't uploaded a video for a while. And I'll explain what's going on with all of this in just a minute, but we've got a bit of catching up to do. So let's begin by going back a couple of weeks. Cleveland Long Swim dates back to at least 1928. It starts at Lady Bay, about a mile up the coast from the pier, and the swimmers head down the coast under the pier arches and back to shore. There are really old historic trophies for the winners, and seeing as you have the river and the tidal flow to help you, you can smash out some pretty fast times. Often the winners are around 12 or 13 minutes. I've dipped under 17 minutes for the mile, but this year was never going to be pretty, being it is only my third swim since we went into lockdown for the first time. It was super tough, it turns out that you need to swim to be good at swimming, but it felt amazing to be part of it all again and see so many old friends that I've missed so much. It sells out every year, so enter early, and a huge thank to Jason Phillips at Drone Zone Bristol for allowing me to use this incredible footage. Why is it that every single thing that I do, music, drumming, filmmaking, racing, bikes, triathlon, all involves packing so much kit? My family love Exmouth, it's only an hour away and we come here a lot. It's a stunning place to hold a triathlon, an independent race that I raced when it started in 2019, then it skipped last year for obvious reasons and is back with both sprint and Olympic races this year. High times meant a very early registration and start, but this is fast becoming one of my favourite races to do. The sea swim was challenging with a bit of chop making sighting tricky. The bike manages to squeeze 400 metres of elevation into 20 kilometres, but the run is pan flat out and back along the prom. My results are absolutely nothing to be proud of other than the fact that I crossed the finishing line. And to all intents and purposes, it's more of a start line for me really. So, so good to race with mates again. Wonderful humans. One more, one more. Very obvious, this is your favourite bit. So we're pretty much caught up in terms of sporting stuff because um, I haven't done any running, swimming or cycling for well over a week. We moved here where we are now um, a week yesterday, um, and we have not stopped since we got in. Um, Becky's treatment room had to be ready for Tuesday. We moved in on the Wednesday, uh, so we had six days to get it in a position where she could work. Um, had to take the carpet up, sand the floors, varnish the floors, paint the walls, they were pink. Take the um, curtains down, put frosted glass up, you name it. We've also half started the living room and doing the same thing on that in terms of sanding the floors back, taking down on those amazing uh, 80s, I guess late 70s, 80s kind of uh, stone TV uh, kind of sets around the fireplace and there was about two tonne of rubble that had to be moved out of there and all those kind of things and just settling in and kind of getting phase one done. Phase one is kind of getting the house livable but what you can see uh, behind me is going to be my office um, when it's finished. It needs a new roof all the way along and this is only about half of it. The other side of that wood back there um, is another garage uh, size space behind it which is going to be where all the bikes kept, where all the workshop is, the turbo trainer, and I'm going to get a treadmill um, and in here is going to be my office which is going to be all the sort of businesses that I run really, um, so video production, all the stuff I do with the music stuff and also the coaching things as well. I've got all the important stuff in here, coffee machine, we'll put a breakfast bar up and a fridge and bookshelves and, and uh, those kind of things, desks arriving, TVs up, uh, sofas arriving. So it's going to be um, a, a hugely different space. In fact, what I had previously um, was about this square. 
um, and it just feels so nice to be able to move around in it. And I'm looking forward to getting to the point where we can kind of get phase one done and, uh, and actually get back to some training because I'm mega out of shape. Um, piling on the pounds um, because I'm not really, I'm physically moving around doing stuff and I've uh, got to go back to work, but I'm not really running or swimming or cycling. So we need to get that back in. I'm sure most of you have moved house and know just what it's like. It's, it's chaos. And um, the last house we moved into was pristine. This house needs a lot of work and it's got a lot of potential. So we're going to do it in three phases. Phase one is just to get it livable. But I love this space. It's brilliant. It's got exposed brickwork on the inside. It used to be a haberdasher's shop. The, the house that we're in, the ground floor was a haberdasher's shop. So this is where they stored all of the fabrics, the long lengths of fabric. So it's why it's a, a 14 meter long garage. And uh, But yeah, the asbestos tiles need to come off and get a new roof on there. And I should have somebody popping around at some point today to give me a quote uh, to get all that done. But that's where we're at. I'm sorry it's taken a while to get a video up, but I'm sure you can all understand why. It's been... Yeah, a bit of a, a mind game in places as well. Um, just, I guess, to do with exhaustion and everyone's in their own little worlds when you move, aren't they? They, they kind of, um, they're, they're sort of focusing on what they've got to do and it's really hard to kind of spend any time together because there's always boxes to unpack and uh, it's going to be really important over the next couple of weeks to make sure that we actually kind of get to the point where we can uh, just spend a bit of time together and, and go and do some stuff. It's Indy, my youngest, 10th birthday yesterday. Uh, so he's going to Laser Quest tonight. So um, so he'll enjoy that. But that's it, really. I don't think there's much more to report. Obviously, this is going to be an ongoing story, as is the room next door once the roof's done. Um, you'll see it develop through these videos. And I'll probably devote a bit more time to it once it's kind of nearing completion. But um, it's going to take a bit of work. But hey, uh, all good things do. That dopamine rush we get is far, far bigger if the challenge is greater. Um, you know, we don't tend to get it, it's a short term sort of uh, rush you get from buying something on Amazon and it arriving the next day or, or uh, doing something that doesn't take an awful lot of work. Um, and I remember my dad saying years ago that it, credit cards were the start of this when you didn't have to work to get uh, to buy stuff. You, 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 you didn't have to save up for it. And um, I agree with him on that. The, the short uh, sort of um, endorphin rush that you get, the, the dopamine hit, I mean, um, it it's bigger when you have a big project to do um, but it's hard to remember that when you're when you're kind of in the midst of it or at the very start of it and you can't even see what the next best thing to do is anyway i'm waffling and uh, i'm gonna leave you um to carry on doing some more work on the house um before taking indy and a bunch of kids to laser quest hope you well and i'll see you on the next video